Live from the Calais Warehouse, it's me, Deborah Francis White, with the Guilty Feminist, starring the volunteers of Calais and Dunkirk. I swear to you that before the end of the year, I will be leading a Guilty Feminist night for the volunteers at Seng 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 Club Discotheque. <laughs> it's going to happen, guys. It's going to happen. I don't really know what to expect. I'm worried it might be quite hard to see. It's quite easy to kind of block things out when you just live in England and everything's nice. You just read about things in papers, but to see it might be... I am not usually the person people ask for help. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> but I feel like we're the three amigos. Like yeah. Harriet was mentioning before that she's really clumsy and I was secretly thinking, I'm so I, you are too? Okay, that's Stop three of us. Like, I feel like I've got to get up and go, but clumsy. It really makes you wonder <laughs> what Deb brought us. <laughs> <laughs> we're above, above ground now. We've passed into France. There are a lot of high fences with barbed wire. away by the police, by the authorities, and they can never settle. All right, so this is everything that you want to know. So top five is that you measure it underneath the armpit. Stylish clothes, if we can. Probably not, but good quality, we can get. It's going to be a carrot, cucumber, some red beans, and then we're going to have to do a dressing. So if anyone's up for doing a massive fat dressing, then come and tell me, all dressing suggestions are welcome. It's a barber, a very English barber that does need some ironing, but it's called Country Squire. Country Ooh. Squire clothing. This is the most English donation you could possibly get. That's not a fashion hole, that's just a regular hole. Thin waterproof jacket, thick water, small thick waterproof jacket. We have a winner. Everyone has so much energy. I'm like tired from the gym. <laughs> Like this just attracts really nice people. Like, I haven't met any dicks yet. I'm looking for that like, one bad apple that'll ruin the rest. How long have you been here in the kitchen? Um, on and off since about October. Whoa! <laughs> this is, um, yeah, sure, I, I work in accounting, <laughs> but I'm fun. I'm a fun guy. My favourite thing has been the music. The Calais special where the Guilty Feminist came here to talk to the volunteers. I listened to that podcast and uh, it, it just made me realise how accessible it was. But also I didn't really know there was still a problem because it's not in the news anymore. It kind of became, I couldn't not come it's too easy and it's been really fun and I'm going to come back. <laughs> I would thoroughly recommend coming out and getting stuck in. You're going to a location called Vertier, it's one of the distribution points. Right, yeah. um, it's a very mixed community, so we've got people from Afghanistan, Sudan, Eritrea, Ethiopia. So we don't take any pictures yeah, in the field. Said, yeah. um, some people are actually really afraid of being identified of course, yes. and other people just really just want to be asked. Everyone was really nice, really fun. The rain stopped after we started, yeah. the sun came out. And it sounds like a tiny thing, but actually it's massive. And there was quite a violent eviction this morning. And so to have access to people like um, the community kitchen who are coming out and giving food, it's a lifeline and something hopeful and nice in the day. The info bus is a place where everybody can charge their phones, they can hook up to some Wi-Fi. It's the very thing that is keeping 
these guys here feeling human and connected. I met a guy and he was saying that he was a stand-up back in Eritrea and then he kept apologising for his English and I was like, I've seen stand-ups with way worse English than you. The kindness is extraordinary. One of the lads was like, you look cold, do you want my jumper? And I was like, no, 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 I'm fine, you know, and I felt very safe with these just lovely, lovely people. Like now I have the, I've had the interactions and I've seen the people and it's like, I want them to have the nicest things I can give them. When you talk to people and they're like, oh yeah, I was a stand-up comedian in Eritrea. And the way he described it is like, you know, both being in The Handmaid's Tale, it's like being in a police state. He said they're all psychological wars, mental wars. It's a dictatorship and anybody who opposes the government and the done thing in any way possible, they are oppressed disappeared. He said, now Calais is a different kind of walls. He said, it's, we're, I'm back in walls and I just, I want to be free of the walls and I just want a little patch of earth to live on. It's this mixture of like, you're dealing with something really horrible, but giving all the love and the support really makes you want to come back and spend more time here. Hello Calais! This is a lot like morning briefing, only fun. It's, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be an unqualified delight. Uh, sorry, Talia is informing me that morning briefing is fun, so in which case I'm questioning why everyone laughed when I said it wasn't. There's a show on in London tonight. I don't know if you know, it's a fundraiser for help refugees, all funds coming directly to you. Um, can we have a round of applause for Deborah Francis White? It's insane. It's insane what you can put together. Um, you guys too, well done. Um, don't be dickheads about it though. <laughs> like, it's a certain level of being awesome that I can tolerate guys and you've exceeded it and I feel sick. It was absolutely hilarious and it was also great being able to see the comedians that we've been volunteering with up on stage doing their thing. I didn't know what to expect when I was coming, but to be honest, the one thing I didn't expect was the fashion. The fashion, guys. Big up the refugee community kitchen with the headbands. Whoa! I was like, didn't expect that. It was so nice to have support from such famous people to come over to this place. One of the young guys came up to me and I was like, right, right, information, info, pass information. And he came up to me. And he went, uh, he went, where are you from? <laughs> I was like, shit, am I in an Uber? <laughs> so I said, I'm from London. And he was like, where are you really from? <laughs> so I said, uh, my parents are from Nigeria. <laughs> Someone from Nigeria here? Yeah, come to the front. She's here, she's here. She has arrived. How long have you been um, working at him? Uh, two months. Two months. And how have you found it? It's amazing. I work with RCK Kitchen. Okay. Yes. You... It was also incredible having all our volunteers in a normal sort of situation um, because what we do really isn't so normal. And today has genuinely changed me. I never in a million years thought that I would wear Crocs. Uh, just <laughs> the amount of dance music in the kitchen, I was loving it. And I did want to make up some kind of like chop the carrots, chop the carrots, wash the pans, wash the pans, distribute, distribute, put on a lid. You don't want a lid? That's fine. Take off the lid. Take off the lid. All right, it's time to talk to the Union Chapel. Union Chapel, are you there? They're clapping, but we can't hear anything. Can you hear me, London? I'm killing in London. Can you see me, Hamilton? We hear there are 900 of you, is that true? They've done actual work, like cutting food and serving it. It's the first time they've worked for 10 to 12 years and they're that tired, but it was good and you should come to and do work. And can I say, we volunteered one day. I want to show you the people who volunteer every day. I don't know how they do it, but here are the volunteers. It was 
was really great to see the solidarity and support that came from the supporters in the UK. I think for me, I sometimes feel the world's a really difficult place. Oh, it's so futile, what can I do? Yes. For someone to go, you could do eight hours and that's it, and you've helped us today. There is so much to do here. Um, and I would say that if you're thinking of coming, um, read up on what you can, but just do it. I don't know if it's like an English trait or something of being like afraid of it getting in the way or that you're not like the right person to do something, but um, everyone here genuinely seems really happy that we're here to help. I've never been anywhere in my whole life where you can just sl slot in. Regardless of who you are, what experience you have. You can surprise yourself. You yeah. might be a chef, you might be uh, someone who's organising the admin of, of, the, yeah. of the donations. Even maybe donations. I'm going to offer some, I'm going to sort of dance and cheer everyone up in the Yeah, corner. Just honestly. like throw some moves. I'm like, guys, guys, I'm a performer. Let me inspire you to wash the dishes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I think you'd probably end up having to wash some dishes. No, I don't well. think so. <laughs> Come, it's the best advice that I can give. Like, please, please come. You'll be welcomed with huge open arms. It will change your life forever, um, and you'll meet the best people possible. So please come. This is Deborah from the Guilty Feminist saying thank you so much for watching our film. If you would like to get involved and volunteer or donate, please go to helprefugees.org. And if you would like to perform for the volunteers or teach yoga or some other restorative skill, please email us at calais at guiltyfeminist.com. We really hope to see you there.